for the next section, we're going to be taking a look at um, the different ways of saving data and which ones are potentially insecure. And one thing that's going to help a lot with this is actually having access to a rooted device or a device that we can use super user with. Um, and in order to do this, we can do it using emulators inside of Android Studio. So it doesn't require you to root a device or have your own rooted device. There are actually a few that are built into Android Studio, but the way of accessing them is not always particularly clear. So I'm going to show you how to set up a rooted device and access it through ADB um, through, this, uh, through Android Studio. So we're going to create a virtual device as we typically do. And the devices that I like to use for these are any of the ones without the Play Store icons on them. Um, and usually, um, for instance, I would pick one that is just sort of like a generic device. The generic devices are usually just like more compatible with the different images, um, but it doesn't really matter in reality which one you pick. Uh, really, any of these will work. Um, but I think without the Play Store icon is typically what we want to stick with. So I'm going to pick the 5.4 inch uh, FWVGA and we'll hit next. Now the image that we're using is also very important. Instead of using the typical recommended images, we want to use an x86 image and we want to use one that will um, not have the Google API included. Or, well, you can pick any of the ones with the Google API as well, but you want to pick one from here that doesn't have like the, the typical play setup. And what I mean by that is essentially like when you're taking a look at these ones, these ones are produced specifically by Google Inc. Um, and these ones are through the Android open source project. So to give a little bit of background, uh, Android is an open source operating system, which means that anyone could build images of them. The images that are in the x86 images are more generic. And essentially the benefit of this is that we're able to do things such as like accessing the root permissions on them, um, rather than the ones that are built by Google, which they have locked down to the point where you aren't able to access them um, without finding some form of exploit to be able to do that. So in this case, I'm using the uh, the Pi one, which is 9.0, the x86 build. So once you've selected the one that you wanna use, you can click next and then we'll give it a name. I'll just call this one, um, I'll call it rooted too, because I already have one that's uh, rooted. And we'll press finish. Now, when we boot this up, we'll get the typical sort of Android emulator device. Uh, this specific one that I picked has a bit of a larger resolution compared to the, um, the original one that we were working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this boot. And while that's booting up, I'm gonna launch up my command line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate to you how you can enable the root permissions and the root aspects of uh, Android through this device. So once you have the device booted up, you're able to still utilize like ADB in the same way. So you could do like ADB shell to shell into the device. Um, you can also use ADB install to install the applications onto the device that we've been using. Um, the main thing is once you're inside of the shell, typically we don't have full permissions. So you can see here permissions are denied, for instance. Now, if you want to fix this, you can just type in SU and this will escalate you to super user, which you can tell by the pound symbol that is now on the command line instead of the dollar sign. Once you have this, you'll see that you no longer get the permission denied errors. This means that you are now a root user on the device. So it's really as simple as this. Now, again, the reason why I want to show you this is because there are specific folders such as the data folders here that will store data for all of the applications. And as you can see, as a root user, we can access these files. So a lot of the times when people are making applications, they'll save data to these files that is um, sensitive data. And if we're able to access it as a root user, then it could potentially mean that there are vulnerabilities. For instance, if they're storing things like their um, API keys or something like that, or they're storing data in the database that um, is like confidential to them, then we might be able to access that and be able to exploit that information. So that's what we'll take a look at in the next video. For this, I just wanted to show you how to get a rooted device through the Android uh, ADB system.